Welcome to FPNA Visionaries. This is the channel for finance professionals to get tips, tricks, and information from some of the leaders in the finance field. So today we've got uh, Douglas Young. He's a seasoned finance professional, uh, worked in a lot of FPNA departments at a senior level at large companies such as Expedia, Avon. Uh, he now has his own consultancy and is uh, based in Singapore. Welcome, Douglas. Thanks, Darren. Good to be here. So let's start off. Just give, give us a quick recap of uh, what you've been involved in in the finance and FPNA world up till now. Yes, uh, I have been in uh, the FPNA side of uh, finance for twenty plus years. I uh, worked in Fortune five hundred companies like Nortel Networks, uh, Rockwell Automation. And most recently with uh, Avon and Expedia here in Singapore. I've also worked for a startup company that specialized in Facebook games publishing. So that was a while back, but it was a good experience. Uh, so letting me have understanding of both really large corporations, how they do FP&A, and then also be able to apply it to a smaller setting uh, like a startup or a mid-stage growth business. Wonderful, that's great. Um, so one of the topics that we're going to cover today is the top five trends for 2019 for FP&A. So Douglas has come up with uh, some of the areas which he feels are particularly important. Uh, we're going to kick off with machine learning and AI. Um, I'm sure you'll agree, Douglas, this uh, can be somewhat of a interesting topic when it comes to finance folks who tend to look at the past and look at uh, traditional ways of doing things. So talk to us a little bit about what you think we'll, you will be seeing in 2019 and beyond. Yes, uh, I think that's a really interesting topic for finance professionals, especially folks in FP&A, because first of all, it is a great time saver for the FP&A function. We used to have to spend a lot of time trying to get the data, understand the data, and then do the modeling and then reconcile everything. But from a couple of years back, we started to see this trend where machine learning and artificial intelligence are being talked a lot more in terms of how they can help in the forecasting side of things. So the role of FPNA professionals would probably shift a lot from the preparation or preparing of the data to really understanding and, and interpreting the data that comes from machine learning and, and AI. Especially there are a lot of exceptions. Uh, we all know when we do forecasting, there's always spikes and, and uh, different one of impact to the data set that we need to be very careful of. Uh, so, I think as FPNA professions, we need to be able to look at those and provide the right business insights, more to add flavor and color to what comes out from machine learning and AI. Fantastic, that's great. Um, and the second uh, topic on your list is uh, the usage of specialized financial planning tools. Um, first of all, can you define what you mean by specialized uh, planning tools? Yes, so specialized uh, financial planning to probably point to more platforms and software that's being developed to take advantage of the large data sets, uh, especially for uh, what we were just talking about machine learning and AI. So there, there needs to be some uh, more sophisticated tools that can take advantage of the, the, the wealth of data that comes from machine learning and AI and not just looking at data dumps from ERP such as Oracle or SAP or, and try to manipulate those in Excel. Just because we used to do a lot less data intensive calculations on Excel, uh, but nowadays, given the, the amount of data that needs to go into a financial model, uh, it becomes a very big stress on the integrity of different Excel models. So the best way is really to take advantage of specialized tools that is really good at gathering data and manipulating data and then feed that uh, information into Excel where 
the Excel can do what it, what it's designed to do, providing the flexibility, providing the analytical capability, and easy to understand modeling for FPNA professionals, but leave the uh, a lot more of the data crunching and structuring of information to the the, the back end of these specialized planning tools. Great. And uh, I think you hit on a couple of very important points that uh, obviously Excel is very prevalent in, in the finance role, um, but uh, there's a lot of folks out there trying to get away from Excel. Do you feel Excel will ever ever die or ever go away in, in the finance role? No, I don't think so, because pretty much every finance uh, professional grew up on learning and perfecting their Excel skills. That's the number one skills, I guess, for, for most finance professionals. And Excel itself is, is improving from version to version, and it's becoming more powerful, and calculation or manipulation of data is just getting better and better every year. But that's still it's not where a specialized tool can be in terms of the, the back-end data structure and just be able to organize the data in, in a very uh, effective way. So it's almost like Excel, to me, will continue uh, definitely, but it will work more and more and more work better and better with these financial planning tools to become uh, one really uh, powerful package for finance professionals. Absolutely. And I think another key thing that you mentioned there is to get away from uh, a lot of finance teams chasing their tail, doing menial tasks and really getting down to adding value to the business and strategically driving the business forward. That, that's correct. Uh, and, and that's where you know, finance professionals need to better themselves. And that's the, the, the future of uh, FP&A, which I believe will be more on the interpreting and providing insight because we, we all know that machine learning and AI will, will take over very soon uh, a lot of the menial tasks that you just mentioned. And the way for finance professionals to stay relevant is really on the interpretation and be able to, to read and get business insights from the, from the data. And next on your list is uh, zero-based budgeting. Obviously, budgeting for most organizations is somewhat of a chore, a long process, um, not so refined. Talk to me about what, what you mean by zero-based budgeting and how that can help an organization. Yes, uh, zero-based budgeting, uh, I think a lot of people know, is, is, has been around for a long time. But it's kind of fell out of favor for, for a while just because of the, the application it is somewhat tedious and it's difficult for an organization to implement it. But with, with all these new tools and, and ability to collaborate throughout the organization, uh, not just functionally, but also geographically, I think the, uh, zero-based budgeting is, is really on a comeback, uh, which allows the whole organization to, to work together to identify the, the right costs and expense drivers and to provide the, the business with better tools to understand and, and control the expenses, not to mention the strategic importance of being able to redirect business operation savings to more strategic areas of the organization. So uh, I think with the machine learning and with the specialized plan, financial planning tool that we just talked about, some of these older methodology can really be updated in today's world and provide a very good way for organizations to un understand their, their cost and their, their businesses. Fantastic. Um, and then fourth on your list here is evolving the FP&A function. Um, traditionally, again, uh, the, the finance teams and the finance department has some, been somewhat conservative. Uh, talk to me about what you mean by evolving FP&A. Yes, just like I mentioned earlier, the, the future of FP&A is really be able to go from very structured forecasting budgeting cycles 
and maybe you know after the the forecasting cycle is done they start to get involved in some ad hoc and analysis for the business but uh if we can now spend more time on understanding the business and less on just manipulating the data the, the fpna function will have to evolve into something else which is not just uh, looking at financial data but helping the business analyze non financial data uh, which really impacts the the business performance businesses are divine dif- different functions are defining different kpis for themselves so fpna being uh, the function that's really should be able to understand holistically uh, how to improve a business profitability they can now take their financial analysis skill set also apply that to analyzing KPIs and then help different functions understand how their performance impact the overall profitability of, of a company so that's the that's how i see uh, the fpna function evolves not just being uh, not just staying in the financial side of things but also looking at operation and KPIs and uh, to help businesses make more sense of what they do on a daily basis uh, and how that contributes to the bottom line Excellent. Um and I think this leads nicely into your last trend here in terms of um basically the FPMA team development as well and how they can uh how you can foster your team uh, within the finance. Exactly. So finance professionals especially in FPMA are used to come from mostly on the the accounting side of of of, of things. so we are very good at the the accounting and making sure that we have the the right processes and we pretty much is educated from from a you know business accounting standpoint but with the evolving fpna functions we really need to hone in on our analytic skills like i said not just analyzing financial data but understanding the the kpis so uh, the analytical skill needs to be broadened to different areas of the business and for us to do that uh, then another thing to keep in mind and really work on is to develop the business acumen so that when you have a conversation with the business uh, you are communicating with the line managers in their language but at the same time be able to translate the, the financial acumen into a language that that the business people un- understands and lastly because of that the, the need to understand data so fpna professionals now need to understand how to uh, present and communicate that data back to the business we, we used to put up a lot of spreadsheets copy and paste it onto a powerpoint but in in today's world that's not good enough for people to understand so the ability to improve on the communication side not not only verbally but also how to present data in a concise manner data visualization which again some of the specialized uh, financial uh, planning tool can help and and really be able to tell a story and convince your your audience uh, on what you want to tell them uh, will be very important in developing uh, your team's uh, skill set so is 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 really evolving from just being accountants and understanding numbers to being more analytical being more proficient in business acumen and being a, a better communicator great well douglas really appreciate you giving us your five trends and tips for 2019 uh over the next few weeks we'll be honing in in more detail this was just a brief look at that so i really appreciate your time today okay thank you very much darren thank you